one morning to find my pet goldfish, Blobby, brutally stabbed with a chopstick. You might be wondering, how did this happen? And honestly, same. All I know is it was part of a fun game my cousins were playing. But this situation didn't shock me too much. It didn't traumatize me. That's because of how peaceful Blobby was. He taught me how to be calm by his existence alone. I brought in Blobby II to act as his long-lost brother. I would say, OK, Blobby, spin. And all I'd get back is a blub, 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 blub. Although some animals can't do very much, it doesn't mean they can't teach us a thing or two. He's quite lame, but what isn't lame is my friend's dog, Max. I'd go over to Driti's house, and she would say, Max, sit. And he'd sit down faster than the blink of an eye. I'm over here, absolutely shocked. I can't make Blobby do anything. Honestly, I've tried. And Max could do all of these tricks effortlessly. The tricks weren't the most interesting thing to me. It's the fact that he could learn them so quickly. I started to think, OK, how long does it take me to learn a new skill? Probably too long. <laughs> how long did it take for Max to learn how to sit? About three hours. That in itself is a pretty interesting discovery. Animals are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. They're good at getting themselves out of sticky situations that they don't want to be in. And I'm sure you'd love to be able to do the same. Let's hop onto another branch of the family tree. Apes. The common perception of apes is that they're humans, but dumber. And that's not true. We've heard of apes saving human lives, learning how to sign, the really cool thing about apes is that they are master manipulators. Now, after today, I don't want you to abuse this power, but let's just say, if you end up needing it, you're welcome. When apes are trying to assert dominance, have you ever been speaking in a group of people and then somebody interrupts you? I know you were talking, but okay. let me tell you Did what you happened. Did you know that we can't cut you off? But there's this really cool thing that I... you should never feel as though somebody else's opinion is more important than your own. And luckily for us, nature has a solution. When apes are trying to assert dominance, they often throw their arms up to take up more room, to seem larger. What do we do with this information? We become the copycats, if you'd like. If you were to throw your arms up mid-conversation, you would look a little bit silly. So how do we copy this in our human lives? We can place our hands on our hips. Or, if you're using hand gestures, you can bring them out a little bit instead of having them all closed in. Another thing that apes like to do is they like to find higher ground to make it seem like their status is physically higher. Again, how do we mimic this? We can push our shoulders back and improve our posture. This science is called biomimicry. Now, it sounds all fancy-smancy, but all it really is is copying nature. What does it mean to copy nature? The Wright brothers first designed airplanes by copying what they saw in birds. And now, we have this aircraft that flies like a falcon. As you can see, nature truly is the best designer. Our next issue comes from an uninvited guest who may be able to help us solve a global issue. As you know, we're currently undergoing a climate crisis. And one thing that contributes to this crisis is heating our homes to maintain a comfortable temperature. But let's see if there really is an issue to be solved. Let's play a game. I'd like you to turn to the blank page in your booklet so you can tally up your marks. Are you guys ready? OK, let's get started. I'd like you to add a point if you turned on your heater today, the 31st of July. OK? 
at a point if you usually turn on your heater in summer. Now, you can't get away with this one since we are in Aberdeen. At a point if you leave your heater on when you go for a long day out. And finally, at a point if you turn on your heater when it's snowing. OK, let's evaluate. Put up your hand if you have four or less points. Keep your hand up if you have three or less points. Two or less points? Does anybody have one point? If you do, well done. You and your homes are doing amazing, honestly. But the golden question is, does anybody have zero points? Don't worry if that isn't your present, because it can soon be your future, if you listen for the next minute or so. What would you do if I told you that somebody in this room does have zero points? It's definitely not me. Look towards the ground, and you may see. Don't be alarmed by the termites that are going to be released beneath your feet. Yep, we're ready. <laughs> Just kidding, I haven't actually brought them in, so your fight-or-flight response can stand down. When I say termites, the first thing that comes to mind could be squish, spray, or, if you love a bit of drama, exterminate. But let's shrink ourselves down to their level and really see what's going on. This is a termite mound. It may look to be a couple of centimeters tall, but it's actually 20 feet tall. That's four times my height and a thousand times the size of a termite. However, arguably, the most interesting thing about these mounds are the pores that they have. Termite mounds are made by stacking small pellets of a mixture of sand, spit, and soil. They form small interconnecting pores that regulate ventilation, which means that their mounds can be kept at a constant temperature for their survival. This is an image from the Harvard magazine. As we can see through a thermal camera, the temperature of the termite mound is kept constant during warm and cold weather. In buildings all across the world, including our own, it takes a huge amount, a destructive amount of energy for this process to take place. Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, is 500 times the size of a person, whereas a termite mound is 1,000 times the size of a termite, and it's energy-free. As you can see, we have a lot to learn from animals. In a couple of months, Scotland will be hosting COP26. It's about saving the Earth, making small changes. It's about seeing things a little differently. And if we choose to see things a little differently, the changes that we have to make will become crystal clear, and the results will be unmatched. I'd like you to hold on to your seats for just a while longer. Your world is about to be rocked one last time. As far as we know, kittens don't worry as to what might or might not be happening to them in the future. They don't worry about social media, as long as they have food, water, warmth. They like to focus on things like play and sleep. And we can learn from that. Put your hand up. No way. Put your paw up if, at the moment, you have access to food and water whenever you need it. Keep your paw up if you have access to warmth and shelter whenever you need it. Keep your paw up if you're not suffering from any physical or physiological pain at the moment. OK, so keep your hand up if you can choose to not worry about change. Now, if your arm is absolutely aching, well done. You've just learned from someone who can't even speak your language, a kitten. I study this 
because it's my passion. It's what I want my future to be. But I know there's a little bit of it in every single one of you. Who sat riveted to the blue planet or tiny creatures in the past few months? You see, we're starting to open our eyes to something that we were once blind to. It's not something anymore. It's someone. Thank you.